Well, the Hunter Wetlands, they've got a unique place in New South Wales and, and nationally as being one of the top shorebird sites. There are birds from lots of different bird families in the shorebird group, and some of them are migratory, some of them are resident. The majority of them are going to, into the Northern Hemisphere, going to at least near the Arctic Circle. Some fly non-stop from, say, Alaska to Australia, so they really need to immediately start resting and feeding. We need to allow them to do that in order for this breeding strategy to work. I remember years ago somebody asked me, so, so what if we lost all of our salt marsh? What makes up a school prawn in the Hunter estuary is primarily salt marsh. So salt marsh is primary production for the food that we get out of the ocean. And salt marsh is also shorebird habitat. It, it all fits together. And if we lose the salt marsh, not only do the shorebirds lose their feeding and resting areas, but we lose the food that goes into the system that feeds the food that ends up on our plate. People go there click bait. If they can do that at low tide, then they've already managed the disturbance that they may have created for the birds. If you're out on the waterway, the dikes there, upstream from the bridge, is another major daytime roost for the shorebirds. For any reason you need to be really close to that dike, then it's slow as you go. Australia in general is such a unique environment for native flora and fauna that from a young age, everybody who lives here should embrace that against all odds, that this is amazing. Mm -hmm.